In this video, we're going to be learning about the basics of electric field lines, how to draw them, and then also some concepts that are attached to these different drawings and ideas. Now, if we're taking a look at these different charges, um, everything is based on a positive test charge. So all the lines are drawn as if a positive test charge was sitting at that particular region. Now for a charge, that means it has some kind of Q value. The Q is the variable representative of charge, and then capital C stands for coulombs, which is the unit for charge. So let's go ahead and spell that out. Now, because everything is based on a positive test charge, we know that like charges or same charges repel one another. So if we were drawing one on this particular charge, it would look something like this, and we would have a bunch of electric field lines pointing outwards, and then vice versa for a negative test charge, or a negative charge, excuse me. So any kind of positive charge will always have some vectors pointing away from it, and negative um, charges will always have some vectors pointing towards it, because like I said, everything is based on a positive test charge. In the event that you have a negative charge, such as an electron, it would just move against the field lines in the exact opposite direction. Now I drew these field lines as if these two weren't close to each other. So the second set of drawings over here and over here, uh, I'm going to draw the field lines as if like both of them were right next to each other. So we're just pretending these are kind of infinitely far from each other. Okay. Um, now the second rule that we need to know is that based on the amount of charge per um, each one of these, we have to draw the field line density proportional to the amount of charge that it has. For example, if this one has a charge of, we'll say, uh, we'll just call it Q, and then this one over here is 2Q, then it would have double the density of field lines. So I didn't even count them up originally, but I see here that there's six. So then I'm going to go ahead and draw 12. Okay, and that's definitely not a great drawing as far as the spacing goes. Um, but as you see, there's a gr greater density of the field lines exactly double proportional to the amount of charge. Now, also because the density matters as far as the field lines go, that density changes as a charge gets closer or farther. So say, for example, if something were right over here, you notice the spacing of the lines is a little bit more spread out. And if something were right next to it, the spacing of the lines is a little bit closer. So the distance is definitely a large factor in affecting those charge that charge uh, density or the field density as well. So same thing for this one as well. Um, if you had a negative, then you would just have a greater density of lines, except all of these lines would be going towards it. And you kind of get the idea. Okay, I'm not even going to count those up, um, but same idea. The amount of field lines you draw is proportional to the change in the charge. So if it had triple the charge value, then you'd have tripled the electric field lines. Now let's do some drawings with um, two charges that are close to one another. Now, again, I just kind of imagine if you put a positive in any particular position, what path is it going to take? It's going to get pushed away from the red positive particle and it's going to move towards the blue negative particle. So if it's right in the middle, it's going to follow this line right here. Okay, so if it is anywhere in the center here, it's going to go fairly straight. And then if it's going to go towards the outside, it's going to start to follow some sort of curved path like this. So again, if you just kind of imagine what would happen to a positive charge, if you put it out here, it doesn't real, really feel too much of the effects of this negative charge. It does get attracted to it, but it has such um, a great effect from this positive charge that's right next to it. It's going to get pushed away in this direction uh, and anywhere that's sort of in between, it's going to sort of take these arcing field lines towards the negative charge. 
Now for this one, it's gonna sort of have a similar look to it, but since they're getting repelled by both of these positive charges, if you put it perfectly in the center here, it actually would stay completely at rest, but anywhere else it would get repelled and then move along these curved lines. Okay. Again, you're just kind of imagining the effect of what would happen to a positive charge. So if it was in the dead center here, and we'll say this is positive Q and positive Q, it would actually get repelled by equal amounts in opposite directions, so it would remain at rest. But anywhere else, it would get pushed in somewhat of a curved path, because this one wants to push it away to the upper right-hand corner, and then this one is going to push it away to the upper left-hand corner. And with both of those effects, this one being greater because it's closer, it's going to cause these curved lines. And then in the end, you see this set of curved lines right over here. If these were two negative charges, the diagram would look exactly the same, except all these purple arrows would be going in to the charge as opposed to away. But the actual shape of it is going to look exactly the same. All right, now for our very last one, we have um, a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate. And just based on what these two objects look like, they're not spherical as these are over here. So because they're not spherical, we have a straight path in between both of these charge plates. And again, it's going to follow a curved path as you come outside of these different charge plates. So basically when you're drawing these electric field lines, um, again, just basic ideas, you wanna make sure everything is going away from positive charges and towards negative charges. And then if something has a greater value for its charge, then you wanna make sure that the density of field lines is proportional to the change in that charge. And then when you have different charges interacting with one another, um, their field lines are going to start to curve in some different ways and cause a lot more curvature in your field lines, um, such as these last three drawings here. Um, but anyways, that pretty much covers the basics of how to draw the electric field lines. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.